You know the NES, of course you do, Nintendo's first cartridge based home console, colourful in an 8 bit kind of way, and you know the Game Boy 2, Nintendo's first cartridge based handheld console, it was equally 8 bit but much less colourful, in fact it was totally bereft of colour wasn't it, at least in its original incarnation. But did you know that the NES has a secret, seemingly undiscovered Game Boy style graphics mode? Probably not, and you're probably thinking that this sounds like total clickbait nonsense. Well, I am stretching a little bit, I will admit, but this isn't complete guff and bluster. There is something to this, honestly. And here it is, the original Super Mario Brothers running in what you might call Game Boy mode. Looks eerily Game Boy-like, doesn't it? But of course this version of Super Mario Bros. never made it to the original Game Boy. But it doesn't have to be Mario, we can see the same thing with Zelda, which maybe doesn't look quite so good, I will admit. How about Kid Icarus 2? What on earth is this? Have I hacked these games? Well, I have a little bit. Two little bits if you want to be precise, but I haven't edited the graphics or reprogrammed the game, not in any major way. I've not laboriously gone through editing things in these games. I've just switched on a little known NES graphics mode. And it works with near enough any and every game, and this isn't some emulator thing either. It works just fine on the original hardware too. A Famicom in this case, but it's the same thing underneath. NES Castlevania here looking rather like Castlevania The Adventure for Game Boy now. This is all totally stupid though, isn't it? Why on earth would you want to do this? Well, I'm sure most people probably wouldn't, but I find it strangely appealing. Yes, it looks more like a Super Game Boy or some kind of emulator than an actual Game Boy screen, but for some reason this appeals to me. So how on earth does this work and what on earth am I on about when I say that this is a hidden feature of the NES? Well, let me try and explain. You see, this is all to do with what's called the PPU mask register. This is one of a group of hardware registers, sort of reserved slots in the system's memory, that allow the CPU running the show to communicate with the PPU, the graphics chip. I can feel a lot of eyes glazing over here, so I'll try and keep this to the point. The mask register is a single byte, really like a bank of eight electronic switches that the CPU can turn on and off, controlling certain features of the graphics chip. Four of these bits or switches are used to turn the graphics on and off and control whether they are displayed at the left side of the screen, essential features that are used in composing game graphics. But this is where things get more interesting because we also have the three colour emphasis bits, red, green and blue. These are a little used feature of the NES that alters the colour palette slightly. When one of these is selected that colour is emphasised and the other colours are dimmed a little bit. Here you can see Super Mario Bros with the original on the left and switching through all three colour emphasis modes on the right. Admittedly, the effect is pretty subtle at best. You can combine them for more options and even use all three at once, which just dims the whole screen. Not many games ever bothered with using these, but it does technically extend the colour palette of the system, even if it's not in a very useful way. This screen from a tech demo shows the entire NES colour palette with all eight permutations of the colour emphasis bits set. It shows up a bit better here, as you can see, but it's not that strong of an emphasis no matter how you look at it. But now we get onto something that's even more obscure, a feature of the NES graphics chip that is almost completely forgotten it seems, and seems to have zero discussion on the internet, apart from a very brief mention on the NES dev wiki. It's Drayscale mode, yes, set this bit in the PPU mask register and it all goes black and white, well, four shades of grey. And you can probably see where this is heading now, if we add a green colour emphasis to the screen whilst in grayscale mode, well we end up with something that is distinctly reminiscent of Game Boy graphics. Or at least distinctively reminiscent of Game Boy graphics to me, some of you are probably going to be a hard sell. And yes, of course, it has to be just coincidence that if you turn these two modes on together, you get something Game Boy-esque. The NES, or Family Computer as it was first known, debuted in 1983, and the Game Boy didn't appear till six years later. They can't have been thinking that far ahead, can they? 
coincidence it may be, but a good one. The Game Boy went on to have precisely four shades of greenish grey, and this is exactly what this has. The resolution is not quite the same though. To get that to match up, we'd have to do something like this. Now you might be wondering how exactly you switch into this mode and how you make these games look as they do here. Well, it does require some hacking to make this change. Sadly, there's no hidden button on the console that you can press. The exact details vary from game to game, but most of the time it's pretty easy. I'll show you what I did with Castlevania here as an example, using the debug features of the fabulous Messen emulator. First I need to find the little bit of code that sets the values of the mask register. This usually happens twice in each frame, once to turn the graphics on and once to turn them off at the end. Using a breakpoint, basically a trigger point that jumps into debug mode when something happens, I can easily find the right section of the game's code. This point here is where the mask register is set up at the beginning of the frame and that's what I want. Looks like it reads the value from a memory location FE in the NES RAM. Now I just need to find the bit of code that sets that up, which is fairly easy. I can just search for the likely code and here it is. I just need to alter this so that instead of just turning the graphics on, it turns on the grayscale and the green emphasis as well. And that should do it. As it turns out, the title screen sets the mask register too, so to make this totally Game Boy, I'll need to change that as well. But let's not get too bogged down in all the details. It now works, if that's what you want to call it. This might seem complex, but it's not really. All I've done is set the game up so two bits are flipped, and that's it. In the annals of game hacking, this is really stupidly simple stuff. But I suppose the question remains, why is this possible at all? Why is there a grayscale mode in the NES graphics chip? I'm really not sure, it doesn't add anything to the colour palette. If you want to have shades of grey, you can, without this mode, as Mario 2 shows us. The Atari 2600 had a black and white mode switch, which in early titles switched things into monochrome for the benefit of people with black and white TVs, making the games easier to see on these displays. Most later games didn't support this feature though, and developers must have thought it wasn't worth the bother. Perhaps this feature was originally the plan for the NES 2 in its very early development, but Nintendo decided against it. That's about all I can come up with. I don't think it could be anything to do with early plans for a portable system. I can't think how this feature would have helped with that. The graphics chip, the PPU, was designed from the ground up for the NES though. This wasn't just a feature that an off-the-shelf part happened to have. Nintendo put this in for a reason, but I don't know what. If you have an idea, well do let me know in the comments. The colour emphasis mode is a bit easier to explain. It adds some variety even if not many developers used it. It making a few appearances here and there. The modern hack, Rockman Minus Infinity, making good use of it in Brightman's stage, neatly switching it on and off mid-frame to give a bright bar on the screen. It's weird that the grayscale mode works with the colour emphasis instead of overriding it, but I think that's just an artefact of the way it's implemented. Only one game that I know of actually makes use of grayscale mode and colour emphasis at the same time, at least in a way that's obvious, and that is Noah's Ark from 1992. And no, it's not that Noah's Ark from Wisdom Tree, but an even more obscure European-only release, developed by a British company and published by Konami. Here, grayscale is combined with blue emphasis to give the rising water effect, which looks quite eye-catching for an 8-bit game. So good, I'm amazed more games didn't attempt to do similar tricks. I suspect then as now, though, this feature of the NES was just not that widely known, and Noah's Ark's late release PAL only obscurity can't have helped publicise it. It was looking at this game that got me going on the whole pointless Game Boy style thing in the first place. If you spent as much time looking at NES graphics as I have, then the effect on Noah's Ark really stands out, and it got me thinking about how it does it. Ironically, I struggled to get this working in Game Boy mode properly because of the way it uses the grayscale. It would be even more pointless if I could because it just ruins the effect. 
So there you have it, a silly coincidence maybe, but the NES has hidden away in it a sickly greenish grayscale mode that looks quite a bit like a Game Boy if you squint, finally revealed to the world. The NES has a lot of hidden depths, a lot of games that do strange and often very clever things, and I still don't think all of its capabilities have been mapped out. Oh, and if anybody really wants me to, I could probably create some downloadable patches for some of these games so you too can enjoy the dubious pleasure of drab NES games without having to do the hacking yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed this, well, whatever it was. If you did find it at least tolerable, then please hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing. It really does help me out, and even more so if you'd like to join my Patreon too. Thank you, as always, to my generous patrons. Thanks so much, guys. Your support makes a huge difference. So I'll sign off and say thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.